Below are the first six terms of an arithmetic sequence. So if we look at these numbers, they go up in sevens. Seven on to five is twelve. Seven on to twelve, nineteen. Add seven gives us the next term. Now that's a clue to the nth term. The nth term is seven n plus or minus a number. So working out this what we call the first difference, working out this difference gives us the first part of the formula for the nth term. Now if we now say right let's work out the first term, the second term, the third term, fourth term using 7n. That means to say the first term is 7 times 1, the second term is 7 times 2, third term is 7 times 3, and the fourth term is 7 times 4. But the first term is 2 less than 7, the second term is 2 less than 14, the third term is 2 less than 21. So that means to say the nth term is actually 7n minus 2. Just check it with this last one. The fifth term, 7 fives, take away 2, yes it works. So that's the nth term, 7n take away 2, minus 2. Always check that it works with your other terms that you've got. Number 18. Given that, x, now how are you going to read this? You could read it as minus 2 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. But I prefer to read it as x is between minus 2 and plus 2. x is between minus 2 and and plus 2. It can also equal minus 2. This sign here says it can also equal minus 2. And x is an integer. Integer means whole number. Integer means whole number. So in fact we're saying x is any whole number x is any whole number between minus 2 and 2 including minus 2. So it's a whole number. It doesn't include 2 because it doesn't have the including part there. And although you might argue whether 0 is a whole number or not, you include the 0 or I should get the complete pattern. X is a whole number, an integer, between minus 2 and plus 2, including minus 2, but not including plus 2, and including 0. OK, we've now got three inequalities, and the question does say a little bit more than on the paper. If x and y are both integers, x and y are both whole numbers, and these three inequalities on a grid marked with a cross, each of the ten points which satisfies all three inequalities. So there's a little bit more written on the exam paper than on this paper here. OK. Let's go for this one. X is between minus 2 and plus 2, including minus 2, but not including plus 2. What we need to do is to draw the graph with the equation X equals minus 2. We need to draw the graph with x equals equation plus 2. Now this line is the graph with the equation plus 2. That line going through there is the graph of x equals minus 2. That's the graph of x equals minus 2. This is going to be the graph of x equals plus 2. Whenever you draw a graph, you should always label it. 
So I've drawn the graph of x equals minus 2. I've drawn the graph of x equals plus 2. But I've made this a dotted line. I hope you can see the reason for that. It doesn't include the plus 2. I've made this a solid line because it does include the minus 2. And let's draw the graph of y equals 0. Now the graph of y equals 2 goes through there. The graph of y equals 1 goes through there. The graph of y equals 0 is actually the same as the x-axis. So that's the graph of y equals 0. So what we've got so far, there's the graph of y equals 0. We've got that x must be between these two lines can be on that line, can't be on that line, but must be above this line. So we've now got a region or an area within which x must fall. Now let's look at this last inequality. X has got to, so y has got to be less than x plus 3. So I need to look at drawing the line y equals x plus 3. That's called the boundary line. Now that's a line that passes through here and goes through these points. How do I know that? Well, if you take any one of these points, let's take that point there. The x coordinate of that point is 1. The y coordinate of that point is 1 plus 3. If you take that point there, the x coordinate of that point is 2. And the y coordinate at that point is 2 plus 3. When you need to draw a graph, you need to think of a table of values. So when you say x equals 0, then y will have to be 0 plus 3. When x equals 1, y will have to be y will have to be 1 plus 3. So if I want to draw the graph, I need to consider coordinates that it passes through. So that's why I've decided it goes through these coordinates. So that is going to be the line y equals x plus 3. So I'm going to draw that line now. Now again, I've drawn it as a dotted line because y is less than x plus 3. Therefore my points that I'm looking for are below that line. So I've ended up with a region inside here that satisfies all three inequalities. In between here, in this triangle, we could call it a triangle solution. The triangle solution. In this triangle, all the points have an x-coordinate between minus 2 and plus 2 including minus 2. All the y coordinates are greater than 0 and they all have values where y is less than the x coordinate added to 3. That means to say that point does all three of those things. So does that point, so does that point, so does that point, so does that point, so does that point. So does that point, because it's allowed to be on this line. Not that point, though. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They are the 10 crosses that the question is talking about. Not too sure how happy you are with that question. But that is a region question. And the marks for that question are, in fact, three marks. If you get all ten crosses correct, you get your three marks. If you get six of the crosses correct, you get two marks. You'll actually get one mark if you get three of the crosses right. Okay. Moving on to number 19.